Hi guys, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood and here we are at the essay. Now, if you're in my class, you got the baby tracker. The baby tracker for the final essay portion. We totally told you, fill this puppy out, it'll make you feel better later. It was optional, but if you can remember it all from memory, go you. Now, this is a very quick outline. Introduction, define Gothic literature. This is super easy. If you guys remember, I put up your Gothic notes. So we go back to our classroom. We go down to our Gothic notes. Do, 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 Where are they? Oh, control F. Notes. There they are. We're awesome like that. We're gonna open up our Gothic notes. And do we remember, my little loves? We have a lot of things that define Gothic literature, but we definitely know that it is a type of literature that is written and about the past, that has a distant location, that has supernatural elements. Now, isn't that beautiful? It's wonderful. Now, some of you guys are going to do this. You're going to go Gothic literature. Find the uh, definition online. Do not copy paste that. Welcome to pet. Welcome to purgatory because now you plagiarized. Now some people are like, I'm just going to go put it in bot quilt and it's going to give me a new one. Guys, a bunch of students are going to do that. And then you're going to look like you stole it from somebody else. Just to find it in your own words, use your own words. So literally it's a type of literature that is written about in the past in a foreign location that includes supernatural elements. I'll take that. Super easy. But now you can't use my words either. Don't even think about it. Now, the next part is you're going to identify the, the elements of Gothic literature. You know what the elements of Gothic literature are. You're like, Gothic literature includes... Can we please go back to our baby tracker? Baby tracker. Baby tracker. A bleak setting. It has a Gothic villain. It has a Gothic theme. A gloomy mood. And reoccurring symbolism. Super easy. I'm feeling better about my life already. Introduce the story you've chosen for your author. Please, please, my loves. Please, please, please. Do not, do not say, I have chosen. No, we discussed. No, I, no, you. So it's going to be super easy if we just turn around and say, we defined our Gothic literature. My bar had a little brain freeze right there. And includes the supernatural. Now, identify the elements we're going to do. Identify. We're going to introduce our story. We're just going to say, let's say you picked... We're gonna pick Coraline for this one. That way you guys can't use it. Coraline is an example of modern, because it was made today, Gothic literature. Now, Coraline was actually a book, so I can do this rather easily. Now I'm going to use quotation marks because I'm talking about the movie. If I was talking about the book, of course, I would use italics. Or if I was, that makes, you know, short stories, poems, pieces of writing, italics. Now, here's that thesis statement. And here's where we live and die. It's super easy, okay? Don't get freaked out because it's in capital letters. So, Coraline... Has, that's when we go back to those. I got to bring up three. One, two, three. Three elements that are contained. Gothic elements that are contained in Coraline. 
she, it has a leak setting, a Gothic theme, and includes reoccurring. Oh, no, no. And includes a Gothic villain. Oh yeah, there's my thesis statement. And now I know what each one of my paragraphs can be about. First paragraph is going to be about bleak setting. The second is going to be about the gothic theme. And my final is going to be about my gothic villain. So now I know what my three body paragraphs are about. So I go to do my topic sentences right now. So I go down to topic sentence. In the movie, or in the story, Coraline, There is a very bleak setting. Simplistic. Yes. Can you write better than that? Definitely. Write better than that. Next topic sentence. Coraline main theme is one that was used by the by the by gothic authors for centuries oh yeah and then my last one the bell dam is the perfect gothic Villain. Boom, boom, boom. Topic sentence is already done. Now let's go down to our reasonings, okay? So the story of Crowley, there's a very big setting. Now we're going to give a little background who, what, when, where details. Why? You're telling me why is it a bleak setting? So in the movie, the creators chose to set the story in Oregon during a rainy fall. The continuous cloud cover mirrors the gothic use of bad weather to keep to keep the characters close to the stately manor. Ooh, we're gonna be using some of our notes right there. Now we remember that it's always in a stately manner. It's always falling apart. The manor, the pink palace. Notice that I use quotation marks. That means that I took it directly from the movie is an old home that is now apartments. It is falling apart. The colors are washed out and Coraline is trapped inside. Super easy. Now we're going to go for our example. Notice we have quotation marks. If you can actually quote the movie, that's great. You can stop, actually get each line, that's great. If you want to use a paraphrase, that's also just fine. So, in the movie, Coraline goes through the house and discovers that there are many issues with structure. She finds 
bugs in the bathroom, leaky windows, and a small door covered in wallpaper. Now, I don't like the small door covered in wallpaper. I don't know if I want to introduce that yet. How about we talk about, oh, and a painting of a disappointed child is the artwork on the walls. Now, we used a paraphrase rather than choose to use a quote, which is perfectly acceptable. But we really must give proper credit where credit is due. So we still have to include our citation. Now, we've got to go and find out who made this puppy. So we want to know the director. Ah. So we're going to sit there and go back over. There it is. They're going to be like that. We used a paraphrase. We did not use a quote, and that's fine. Paraphrasing is just fine. We just got to make sure that we, it's our original work, which means we made it up out of our head. We didn't take it from someplace else. Analyze. Now, our A, we're going to have to say, why is this a bleak setting? A house being on the verge of collapse. And way out in the woods isolates inhabitants much like the gothic writers of the early late no sorry so tired guys you have early oh let's do late now, then we got to remember, what time period was this? Oh, I need to go back to my notes. So we go back to our notes and we realize, mm, don't be like that, don't be like that. These were all written in, oh, that's right, from 17 to 1800. So we can say during the 1700s or during the late 1700s might be our best bet. So we're going to go back over here, the late 1700s. you. Then we talk about this. House being filled with Strange. All right, let's go by down a little bit, guys. Items such as the bugs, artwork, and hidden door. Create. A, ooh, could we hit on gloomy mood? Mm, maybe we want to leave that to the next paragraph. <sighs> Create a bleak and depressing setting. This is enhanced by the creators. to wash out all color. Now, 
I have like told you exactly why I think that. Now, here's where transitions come in. This one is hard, my loves. A transition, you're going to start in one place and end in another. So we're going to start in a paragraph about bleak setting. We are going to end in a paragraph about mm, ooh, theme. So I'm going to start with while Coraline's bleak setting is gothic. The most compelling evidence that it belongs in the genre is its theme. Ooh, did you notice that? Did we see how we did that? We started in our setting. We ended in our theme, and then we go into talking about our theme. Now, first things first, we need to know what our theme is. So we might have to go back to our notes. And we're gonna remember that our second to last slide has all of those beautiful themes, because I got love for you. And we're gonna take a look at this one and go, okay, which one is the theme for Coraline? Oh, totally easy. The supernatural world will avenge injustice. We know that the end of the movie, the Bell Dam is destroyed. So we're sitting there going, okay, that's what happens when you eat children. So we go over here and we have to give our reasoning. So we're actually gonna tell, one second, I have to blow my news real quick. Sorry guys. So we're actually gonna go back and go, okay, this is the theme and this is why it's Gothic. Coraline's is Fabulous. Not a problem. Let's give our evidence. Now, this is where things, because it's theme, we're going to put a whole lot of evidence. Okay. So, again, we're going to be paraphrasing, so we don't need our quotation marks. In the film, what is that? I'm not always saying in the in Coraline, in Coraline, in Coraline, in Coraline, in Coraline. I do, I do break it up. Okay. In the film, we have the evil Bell Dam who has been killing children for centuries. Now, we don't want to go too much into the Bell Dam because we're going to do the veil. So stay away from like telling everything. So, the evil Bell Dam is killing children for centuries. Coraline, and with help, and the cat, tricks the Bell Dam and incarcerates. Her in her own dimension. When she escapes, her her evil hand or escaped hand, when her mm, escapes and tries to release her. It is finally destroyed by the remember? You guys remember? Ah, by the by the heroine and her friends with a rock. They then Throw it down the well. Now, 
hmm, wait a minute, a rock and a well, rocks and waters? Okay, maybe it's not supernatural. <gasps> maybe because we can change things at any point in time. It's the natural world. <gasps> but we change things. It's bar, we change things. It's okay to change things. We change things. I plan that because you got to change things. If it don't make sense, we change it. It's okay. Now we move on. We got to now analyze. Mm. Evil forces in the house are destroyed by the friends using elements of nature. It shows the audience that the supernatural crimes of the Beldam can be avenged through the natural world. I really don't like that last sentence. So that's when we decide to edit. Remember, you can change things at any time. Mm, avenge through or using the natural world. <gasps> using. I like using. Hey. Okay. And we changed the word. And it was okay. Now. Then we're going to go back to another transition. Okay. So when we're transitioning here, we're going to go from the theme to the gothic villain. So, the last one we said, doo -doo. while Coraline's bleak setting is gothic, the most compelling evidence that it belongs in the genre is the theme. Hmm. So we're going to have to go from the theme to the gothic villain. Well, the theme couldn't happen without the gothic villain. While the theme is truly gothic. It is the villain that cements this work in the genre in the genre. Now I use genre twice. Maybe I don't like using genre twice. So remember when we select and then we're gonna go over and oh that's right. We can't actually use that anymore because we used a table. That's okay. We're going to grab this word. Wait, copy, control C. We're going to go over into Google, control V, and we're going to use the word synonym. Oh, there it is. Genre, synonyms, noun, category, ooh, classification, categorization, group, grouping, bracket, head, heading, listing, Set, type, sort, kind, variety. Ooh, I like classification. That sounds all kind of classy. So let's go back over to our outline. Sorry. We're going to go back down here. Ah. Into the classification. Gothic literature. Fabulousness. Now, my beloveds, I'm so tired. So, my beloveds, we've got two solid body paragraphs. And then I'm literally going to do the exact same thing for the third, just using the bell dam as the villain. Now, but at the very last sentence, I can't tie it to the next thing. I'm just going to have to tie back. So if I said, the Beldam is a perfect Gothic villain, there is no greater example of a Gothic villain than an evil presence that disguises itself to lure little children into 
there. Fabulous. And then for kicks and giggles, we are going to go into our conclusion. Now, I did do that paragraph. I'm just not doing it in front of you because we're running out of time and I've been taping forever. Now, conclusion, restate your thesis. Again, super easy. We're going to go up here and we grab our thesis. And then we're going to just rewrite it in something else. So we're going to grab our thesis. Grab. We're going to copy. We're going to go all the way back down here. We're going to remember that's our thesis. We're going to put it in different words. We're going to paste that puppy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably has a bleak setting, a gothic theme, and includes a gothic villain. So, of its bleak setting, theme, and villain, four line is a piece of modern gothic literature. Now, re-emphasize your points. The bell dam is Supernatural powers. The theme is about finding justice in the natural world. The setting is so depressing. It affects the characters. I did a very short, sweet, to the point, and again, utilizing words that I believe you know. Now, and then we to close this piece. Now, a closer is really determined about what kind of uh, essay that you're writing. You guys are doing an argumentative essay, but you guys are not going to do a call to action. Um, you're not going to be like, defend it. No, no, no. For this one, maybe instead our call to action is more like we need to look at the at the modern Gothic and say, yes, it is Gothic. Or maybe it is like, while it is not in the Gothic period, how about we say created? Bad bar. I keep thinking of the book. In the Gothic period, it is still a good example of the genre. Fabulousness. Now, my beloveds, this is just a quick intro, a uh, quick closer. I wrote this in just a couple of minutes. I know it's going to take you guys a lot longer. That's the reason why we got to make sure in our heart of hearts, our love of loves, that we do take the time to sit there and watch slash read what you're going to be utilizing. I really got to make, you got to make sure my beloveds that you don't, wait a minute. That you don't sit there and wait till the last second. Don't do it, my loves. Just please don't do it. Um, I know for a fact that you're going to get to a point that you're tired and you're like really whiny and you're like, Ms. Bar, what am I supposed to do? And I am telling you right now, you just need to do this now while you still have help, while you're still in while you got your time in your resource room, while you've got time in classroom. Do not wait and be like, I'll do it the last minute. You're not going to. And it's going to cause massive problems for you. Okay. So do me a favor, babies, don't do this. 
Do not wait till the last second. See you guys later. Be good. Bye.